All right, welcome back. Episode four. At some point, I'm going to lose count. But we're here at four. Uh, today, we're going to talk about direct mid mesh. So, the last couple of, of episodes, we've gotten to a point where we've mid surfaced a part, we've meshed it, even applied thicknesses to it. Um, now, I'm not going to skip over that middle part, right? I don't want to do mid surfacing. I want to go straight to a what we call a direct mid mesh. Very common for um, some parts that have been uh, injection molded. Uh, uh, things like that. In the aerospace, I, I, I see it every now and then. It works on some really complicated machined parts, um, especially some, some bulkhead type parts, some frame type parts, not so much stringers, those type of things that are usually constant cross section. But um, so uh, what we're going to do today, let's, let's go in and find a part here. I'm going to right click and show all of my model and uh, something that's going to be worth our time. Oh, I think at the end of the day, I'm just going to end up doing doing this again. Even though the mid-surface came out pretty okay, um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and isolate uh, this, this big kind of spar here. All right. Um, so like I said, we're, we're going to skip the mid-surface. Um, so we've cleaned up our geometry, done any of that pre-work. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to mid-mesh. The, the min mesh tool is just going to ask me for a couple things. It's going to ask me for either component, um, the solid itself. Um, this could even take a group of solid elements and, and find a mid mesh of that, kind of a 2D mesh, of a 3D mesh, or just some enclosed surfaces. I happen to have a solid here. Um, and before I go ahead and, and select this, um, I do want to show some of the options in here. And um, the main one, especially for aerospace, and it's on by default, but I want to point it out this idea of flattened connections, because the mid mesh is going to actually take a mid mesh. So it's going to come in here. And if I didn't have that option selected, we'd actually see the mesh follow the fillet, you know, on this right hand side and then on the left hand side. What the flattened connection does is going to make a nice little T between these two. Okay. All right. So like I said, we're going to go and mid mesh this. Um, and then, you know, instead of extracting a mid surface, it's just saying, well, what is the mesh size that you want to use? Um, and I believe in the uh, last mesh, I think a mesh size is about 50. It does still give you a scale down here um, if we zoom in a little bit. So, eh, maybe 50 is a little too big. Let's go 40. Okay. The, the finer the mesh, the, the longer it takes. So I don't want it to take too long, and I do want to do this in real time so you can kind of see what happens. Um, but uh, this is going to go through its mid-meshing process. And then instead of working on surfaces um, for you know, uh, the resultant the resultant mesh of this, we're going to work on directly the mesh itself, right? So once again, I, I would love if this tool gave you a, a, a perfect mid mesh or mid surfaced mesh, you know, um, in one go, but there's going to be, you know, places where it's, it's better and worse, and there's going to be some repair tools, right? So um, all of those repair tools happen to be up here. So we have options for filling holes, uh, kind of guiding a mid edge if it missed a mid edge. We have alignment every now and then you're going to see a kind of a, a couple elements pop out normally you can align them to kind of a base surface and then there's an inspection tool if you'd like to inspect the the mid mesh um, with the uh, cad that it came from um, that's a, a very quick tool to show you if there's any intersections if elements or nodes are jutting through especially if you have a, a more complex part okay. so like i said this this process is it does take a little bit longer than mid surfacing uh, but it's kind of doing a two for one. So you're getting your mid and your mesh at the same time, not just the mid surface. And then you'd have to go mesh it. Okay. And then final tool in this whole thing would be to go and assign the thicknesses to it, right? So I showed that that tool in the last episode of oh, being able to select a solid, being able to select the underlying elements, and we will measure from there. So again, uh, one of the reasons why that tool isn't specifically in a mid surface workflow or a meshing workflow is it's an agnostic tool. It kind of works um, with a given input and a given output. Okay. All right, looks like we're pretty close to being done. Okay. So <clears throat> as we look at this, so the mesh size is, is a little large. We can come in, you know, we could extract a smaller mesh size, and I encourage you try to try to just extract the size that you want, you know, at the end of the day that you want. Um, but in general, let's just kind of go in and do some, some investigating. Okay. In general, not too, too bad. So let's go and look at the profile here. So you know, the profile isn't 
too bad. Um, I'm gonna we'll be able to fix some of these things with some of the uh, these rebuild tools are quite nice for some of this process as well. So especially right in here, um, what I'm really looking for is does the does the mesh capture the shape? I'm not super concerned about the quality of the mesh because there's things very easy tools I can do to to do with quality, but um, and looking down here, you see this is the, the flattened connections option. So instead of following the fillet on either side of this, it, it flattened that connection to a single pipe. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with all of these things so far. I'm a little unhappy right here. right? So I see there's a little break. The geometry here wasn't great, so I could have spent the time to fix that up. But um, uh, maybe this could be a great, great place to kind of look at some of the uh, mesh editing tools. It's fine there. Okay. Just kind of doing a quick visual inspection of anything that, that sticks out that's really, really glaring. Mostly just that one corner. So let's just come in. Come and look at this. Okay. So this could be something where uh, maybe I can align it. You know, it just looks like it's joggling off of this face. Uh, so maybe I'm going to try the align tool. Um, once again, all of these, the, the nice thing I like about the mid mesh tool is that all of these have really good kind of videos to it. So if you're kind of unsure what these do, and, and trust me, these tools can do you know quite a lot. Um, we can come and uh, fix some of this. Okay, so uh, I want to align, so I can either pick elements or nodes. Maybe this time I want to kind of pick nodes. So I'm going to pick these these three nodes and um, align them to say an edge. Okay. Let's see if we can't do that. Okay. We are a little bit better. A little bit better. Let me come and grab uh, maybe instead of these nodes. Let's see what we can do here. It's not the worst thing in the world. Let's try that one more time. So back here, um, align these nodes. Shoot. Uh, or if we could do something maybe even a little more clever, is we could just come in, um, maybe delete these elements. And we can even, in this mid mesh tool, there's this repair and fill option uh, that will allow us to kind of grab these. And um, we can select fill, these lines to fill. Uh, video here is quite nice. Uh, it does some automatic type of repair options as well. Okay. Um, you can even create the mid edge or edit the topology too. Um, and then the other thing that we're going to start to to see a little bit here, and I think this could be a, a decent example, is this idea of um, um, what should we call this? We're calling this Fe Geom. So what we're taking is this finite element. So these are these are elements, right? Um, we're taking these finite elements, and and what we're doing is we are actually putting geometry topology on. Them. Um, and this is done automatically for you. There are some options to toggle it off. But uh, what this does allow us to do is it allows us to come into some of these geometry tools, say like the stitch tool, and it allows us to come in and uh, possibly say, let's close this gap, right? So I can do that. I can move this point there, move this point back here. Uh, I can maybe even come into a patch. And patch that up, and I just kind of treat that like geometry. Okay. Once again, I'm not super concerned about the mesh quality uh, because a pretty standard process after extracting this kind of mid direct mid mesh is to go um, to the rebuild tool, which happens to be under uh, kind of the same tools here. And what the rebuild tool will allow me to do is allow me to take a swath of elements. I'll just do this kind of on the right hand side. <clears throat> this is governed by the parameter and criteria file, which we'll talk about in a later episode. But I'll kind of leave it here. So remember, my, my extraction size was about 40. So this is going to be a little bit smaller. I'm going to go ahead and hit rebuild. What this is going to do is this is going to essentially remesh my part um, according to a parameter and criteria file. And we see the kind of underlying resultant mesh. You know, it wasn't you know predetermined from the the uh, 
you know, the poor quality mesh. It just kind of smoothed over all that. I think it did a really, really decent job here. Um, mostly all quads. We got a few trias here that we could do something with, but you know, for, for a one click process, right, for extracting the mid mesh, um, cleaning it up, treating it either as geometry, which I tend to do. I, I, I like the fact now that we can treat some of this as geometry or, um, getting real familiar with some of the tools in here, which are quite nice. Um, we're able to build this, you know, uh, and no, you know, it, it looks like there's geometry, but the, you know, the, the idea is that this is FE geometry. So there's really going to be a blurred line between geometry and a, a mesh uh, going forward. And then finally, to close the loop on this whole thing, I would suggest you use this map thickness tool. Once again, we'll allow you to come in and map the thickness um, from a, say, source geometry. So I can pick my, my big solid and then the elements that I'm interested in measuring and hit apply thickness. Once again, there's options for offsets. There's options for you know, the resolution and how many properties it makes and those type of things and how it does it. But kind of towards the end of the day, you know, you just kind of want it to directly measure and it's going to go and measure and it does a, a pretty decent job here of elements. Let me just isolate the elements. Right click. Isolate displayed elements. Come back and turn on the thickness. Okay. So it does a pretty good job of measuring the thickness of the uh, surrounding solid of this part. So that's going to be uh, today's episode. Next time we're going to talk solid meshing. Um, so we'll stay in this mesh panel. We'll talk some TET meshing and then obviously hex meshing and the like. Uh, but until then, hope everyone's doing well and we will talk later. Thanks.